playing. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? What is that, Mike? <laughs> hey, hey, you know what they say. Welcome to another episode of Next Level Living. You know what I'm saying? Mike and Crystal, what it do, man? How y'all feeling? Y'all looking good? Bro, what up? Thank you. Feeling good, too. When you look good, you feel good. Hey. <laughs> Ooh, hello. And Chris, so, Chris, so shout out to everybody that's in the, the podcast listening world, podcast listening world, like whether it's Spotify, Apple, whatever. I know you listening, but for shout out to our mm-hmm. YouTube family. I, can I just, I, you know what I'm saying? You my cousin. Can I just, come on, cuz, what's up with the hair? Come on with the you know hair. What? You know what? hair, you don't care. How oh, that? Yeah, hair uh, real quick. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Mm. Oh. Yep, and it's her. And it's her. I'll uh, play. With the oh, yeah, black art in the background, been... Black History Month. You feel me? <laughs> oh, hey, I've been working me? on it for a minute. It was a point where my hair didn't grow past a certain point. And then when yeah. I stopped straightening it so much, this yeah. is like my first time professionally in two years, then it actually started to grow. But That's great. Yeah. And, you, and you know, I'm because I'm next level, Mike, she said it was a time where her hair stopped growing after a certain point. My hair just stopped growing, big dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's just not true. You feel me? Yeah. How you feeling, Mike? Oh, we one in the same, bro. I'm with you. You feel me? <clears throat> Let me go ahead. Shout yeah. out them eggs in the uh in the universe, man. Egg head capital, bro. Starting to look <clears throat> like a hey. case of eggs right now. <laughs> okay, there we go. Hey, so hey I do got an update though. I do got an update. Hey, so Chris, you know, you know, me and Mike, we are part of a push-up challenge, right? Uh-huh. So the, for the for our faithful next levelers that have been listening to the podcast, but Mike. Are you, How you okay, know I'm not about to affirm you. I'm about to affirm you, bro. Another week you bro, went beast mode. Just let me let me bro, affirm you, bro. So for yeah, so to so, so, so all of our next levelers who've been rocking with us, y'all know some of the challenges that I'm gonna name no names, but some people within our push-up group have had. You know Chick. what I'm saying? But we are in, in a new season now. And so Chick. here recently, Austin so everybody that don't know. My chicken <laughs> Austin was was whack. G be talking too much. <sighs> Shut up. Everybody go <laughs> get this uh, work. Yeah. Okay. That's how you feel. Now it's love. Now Let me know when you're done. I'm, so I can Dang. affirm you, bro. Let me know when you're done. Yeah. So Jay, your, affir- your affirmation scare yeah. me. Like, Wait, I don't what's like the story? when they- You know, you Chris, he don't want me to get the he don't want me to get the story out, which is why he keeps interrupting me. You All right, I'm saying? Tell me the story. All right, All right. Put, your, All right. put yours All on right. mute. Mike. Hey, do me a favor. Hey, Q, if I give you a thumbs up, that's... All right, we're getting right back to the episode, I promise. But some of y'all been asking where to get the merch. So go to shopnextlevel.co and put in a promo code podcast to get 20% off. All right? All right, back to the episode. Bye. Just mean to mute Mike. Ooh, I went Mm. there. (laughs) I went there. But I'm not going to do it. You good. You good. Drink your water. Reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time. All right, so check this out. So for the, our faithful next levelers who've been rocking with us, y'all know about the push-up challenge. For those of y'all that's not familiar, just know this. Uh, me and Mike and a, a bunch of our other partners, Tim and Austin and Gavin, we, we are part of a push-up group where every week we have to do a thousand push-ups and a thousand crunches. And we've been doing this for years, right? And so we recently brought in um, a new member, uh, my man Adrian Hargrove, a.k.a. Chicken Man. We went to high school together. And Mike... He he loved Adrian, right? But he wasn't. I, I I remember texting Mike like, "Yo, bro, I think Adrian is ready. I think he. I think it's time." And Mike was like, "I bet. I agree. Let's give him a shot." I don't think Mike knew that Adrian was gonna come in and stun on him. So mm. yes, let me affirm Mike. Mike did Where his did thing. Where did you affirm yet? Bro, Mike did bro, his push up. Bro, this is whack. He did his this thing. He whack. did his push ups. But I told everybody like, "Yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, hey." You know, Chicken Man showing up doing this thing. And so, Mike, I'm proud of you. I just want you to have the spirit of celebrating. You feel me? But at, what's crazy is even Austin went beast mode. But what's crazy is that this week, everybody finished on Friday, except for like one person like cleaned up on oh. Saturday. But we're not even waiting till Sunday. Oh, no, Mike. Why would you? Why you take so long? <laughs> No, no, it was it wasn't it wasn't Mike. I think Austin might have finished on Sunday. Now the way that Mike attacked him, I felt like that wasn't cool. But what time? Every, 
that he's not waiting till Sunday, but it was crazy. First yeah. of all, you said everybody finished on Friday, right? Oh, yeah, I thought everybody did, finished on Friday, but I realized Mike Friday, finished on right? Friday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but Mike, actually, Mike actually finished on Thursday ahead of oh. everybody. But he okay. said, shit was stumping on me. So I need a little bit of that energy when you talk about how much Mike beat the oh. rest of the group. He actually came two days early. finished on Thursday, Mike? Bro, that's the whole point. That's why I said I lost track of time because I was waiting so long for Monday. So after two days went by, I thought Sunday was Monday because I was Be off small. already. Be small. Oh. I'm going to call you Marshawn yeah. Lynch. Yeah. I ain't never been on Thursday. I don't deserve yeah. that. I don't deserve so that. So that's but, the, I, but, but they should, I mean, we gonna get on with the show, y'all. Y'all hanging with us. The point of the the moral story is we have till Sunday at midnight to finish. But Big yeah. Mike finishing on Thursday. I cleaned up as always on Friday, and then Mr. you know Austin awesome cleaned up on Saturday. So just shout out to the homies, man. Just proud of y'all. Uh, cute drop, drop a little applause one more time, huh? Austin finished Sunday. That's why we were on his head. So I'm trying to okay. figure out. Okay, man, you just you gotta leave, boy. You just ain't nothing good and, enough and for Jay, you, right? Nah, nah, nah. Jay needs to. Jay needs to tell everybody. Jay, God, ain't nothing good Bro, enough Q, for you, huh? Q, Q, watch it. Watch yourself, Q. Watch yourself, yeah. little buzzer, uh, little yeah. buzzer man. You, you got, got the power. Wait a minute. You? Wait a minute. What is the punchline to this story? So this is the thing. I was no, 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 no. We not. That that was cute to move yeah, on. That's so me. basically, I was just trying to shout out Chicken Man for going beast mode and shouting everybody out for finishing early. All right, Chris, what are we talking about today? Talk to me. That was, that All was right. whack. <laughs> well, let's move on then. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> no. Come on. Okay. Yep. Talk to me. <laughs> We're talking about what happens when motivation runs out. Mm. Like, when you, you know, you mm. heard so many motivational speeches. You've heard so many pe- pep talks. You can only hear so much until you're like, all right, look, I, mm, I'm getting burnt out. So what happens mm. when motivation like runs out. Hmm. Um, so I'll say this. Um, I does your like motivation run out, Jay? Say what? Does your motivation run out? Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> More than y'all well, imagine, sure right? You, uh, I'll relate. say this. Okay. Uh, I feel like when motivation runs out, that's when dedication has to kick in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, motivation going to run out. That's when dedication got to kick in. You know what I'm saying? You're looking at a relationship. You don't always feel those butterflies. You're not always passionately in love. And you're not, you're not always feeling your spouse. But that's when commitment and dedication has to kick in. Where you think yeah. like, all right, I might be getting on your nerves. You might be getting on my nerves. But we made a vow. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to respect you. I'm going to give you some grace. Not really trying to be around you for real right now. But that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, motivation Thanks. will run out. And dedication has to kick in. And so I feel like a lot of people do not go to that next level because they're running off of motivation and they don't have dedication. Mm. Mm. That's why mm. people don't go to the next level. They start off motivated. They start off on fire. And some of our mm. listeners, like you right there, some of our listeners, that's what you struggle with. Beginning of the year, you was like, this going to be my year. This going to be my season. And then February came around and things didn't quite work out for you. You like, oh, I didn't think February is going to work out like this. And then you lost that steam. You lost mm-hmm. that enthusiasm. You know what I'm saying? You lost that excitement. So now you're looking up and you're like, yo, it's not really what I thought it was going to be. And now that your motivation runs out, you stop that momentum. But that's where dedication has to kick in. So that's my thoughts. Mm-hmm. I got some more game. I'm going to share on that in a little bit. Um, but, you know, I don't know if you have y'all ever had a time where you felt like, yo, I'm just not motivated right now, but you had to fight through and push through. Like, let's hey. talk about that real quick. Yeah. Okay. So we used to go on the road a lot um, in artist management. We travel from place to place to place. It's been times where, of course, I'm not motivated to get up in the morning. I'm like, look, I'm tired. I'm running on two hours of sleep. And then I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, but I'm dedicated to the cause. Like, I'm dedicated to to my position. I'm dedicated to getting things done. I'm dedicated to not having a headache tomorrow about it. I'd rather mm-hmm. just do it today because I don't want to have to wake up and worry about me not fulfilling what I was supposed to do, but mm. it's hard. It's not something that's just like, oh yeah, I can naturally get up and jump up and do. It is hard, but once you do it, you like, okay, I'm good. I don't got to worry about that no more. And so it's discipline. That discipline, ooh, it, hmm. it. It's a tough thing to really like deny yourself of sleep or deny yourself of certain things in order to accomplish a goal. And so. 
Hmm. That's I mean, that's that's one situation I can say because that's a basic that's a human need that I had to I've had to deny myself of in order to get things accomplished. But when you t- but when you talk but you said the magic word you talked about goals though, right? So you're like even though I don't want to get up I don't want to do this as much as I don't want to do that I want the goal I want the end results that much more right? Like right, there are some right. people who play pro sports and they really dominate not because they love winning. But because they don't like to lose. Oh, yeah. right. You got some yeah. people that's going to give it they all. They're going to give it 105%. They're going to give it 130%. Not because they want to raise up that trophy, but because they right. don't want to go back into that locker room with their head hanging down. And then they three-year-old son say, Daddy, did you win? And he got to say no. And the papers bash mm-hmm. him. Or he gonna be tr- some people love winning more than losing, but some people despise losing more than they right. love winning. So I feel like yeah. that's probably why you like, I'm going to go without sleep. I'm going to handle my business because I, I want the end results. Does right. that sound kind of accurate with how you? Yeah. Yes. And it's like, and it's not even necessarily which one do you want more? It's which one do you want less? Like mm. I, what I mm. want less of is to have to deal with the results of this. Like that's what I want. Mm. You know, so it's not necessarily sometimes what you want. It's like, what's. I hate when people say the lesser of two evils, but sometimes you really have to wait. Like, what's what's the lesser in this, in this situation? Like, I don't want to, you know, yeah. do too much. Anyway. Mike, what about you? So, uh, y'all both took, like, two excellent approaches to it. And I think um, y'all actually took a few of examples that I was thinking. Um, I'm going to take a different approach to it. I'm going to kind of talk about how me actually living um, off of motivation burnt me out so many times mm. um, living off of the energy of me propelling myself with just the desire to be great without the fundamentals or the dedication of it. So mm. what happened is that I found myself stumbling over the same thing over and over and over feeling inadequate or feeling like something was wrong with me. And the truth is, is that I just wasn't dedicated. Um, I just I just wasn't committed to the cause that I was doing. I was excited, mm. but I wasn't committed. I was I was enthusiastic, but I wasn't dedicated. And so what I realized is that once if I had to trade as excited as I can get, as much as I can influence other people to to join in with that excitement, and actually they may choose to become dedicated through the excitement or my enthusiasm. I realized that if I had to trade in the two, I'd much rather be dedicated to something than enthusiastic about it or motivated to start something. Because the but, truth but, is, but, is that but, motivation but, runs out, man. But the way that me, the way that me and you are wired is we're wired yeah. off of energy. Yeah. We're wired true. off of momentum and excitement That's true. and the thrill. And so what helped me get over the hump, and this might be the same for you was to just be like what Crystal was saying, like, y'all going to be more disciplined because, you know, you take on projects when you're excited about it, but it's a different yeah. type of bandwidth when it's just like, yo, because you know how some people say, yo, like, trust the process. Yeah. But sometimes the process is stemmed off of the motivation. What if I tell Absolutely. people to say, yo, trust the end results? What if we flip it? Because mm-hmm. most people say, yo, just trust the process, just endure. All right, but sometimes that process keeps you motivated. But if you trust the end results... So come on now. Now we now we're talking to somebody that's in college right now, or somebody that's in high school, or somebody that's in medical school, right? Now we're talking about somebody that's trying to start a bakery or you're trying to start an online course. Like now we're talking to somebody that's trying to get something off the ground, like maybe a startup. And you feel like, you know, I was excited about it, but now I've lost this thrill. I didn't get the funding. Things aren't working out. I'm having a hard time with employees. You gotta now just focus on the end goal. So what would you say, Mike, taking other people out of it? What would you say that you feel like you got to do where you've done to say, you know what, I'm not even going to focus on the process. Let me just focus on what I want my 2023 to look like, what I want my 2025 to look like. Does that make sense? It makes sense, but I wrestle with that logic because there's a lot of people that have never seen success. So how oh. do I get someone who, who's never got, mean, though? who's never seen victory, how do I get them to trust in the fact that victory is possible? Does that make sense? Because some well, people... You, why are we talking about other people? We're talking about you, though. What? I'm saying for you. 
You said it's hard because some people haven't seen victory success. Let's just talk. I'm talking about specifically about like you. Like, is that some tools that you use, or are you talking about like what other people might need to do? Okay, so you're asking me personally. What, yeah, what, but yeah, okay. but we but we can. But okay. we. I was just. I was just saying. We That's can fine. talk about other people, but they've experienced some success. Okay. I mean, they got a yeah. good grade. They at least finished high school. They got their GED. Like, they've experienced some type of success, like some small wins. But go ahead, bro. Right. But, and I think it just goes back to what um, was, I think you said that, not Crystal, but you just said about how some people don't enjoy winning as much as they hate losing. So a lot of times when we talk about success, that success sometimes is short lived because the burn or the 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 despise that we have for losing or the moment when we could have won and didn't, we sometimes hold on to the loss to a greater degree than we even do the win, if that makes sense. So for me, when I think about it, um I can I'll just go to sports real quick. The success that yeah, the Kansas City used. I'm a, and I'm going to ask yeah. all of us to give a tangible example, and we're going to get out of the yeah. hypothetical. We're going to go deeper, but go ahead, bro. All right, cool. So the the success the Kansas City Chiefs have had in the past in the past four years in terms of getting to the Super Bowl or getting to the AFC Championship and then winning one Super Bowl, right, which was life-altering. Like, that was really amazing. It was probably one of my bucket list things I want to see happen. It still doesn't outweigh all the losses that we've had. Now, it makes me feel amazing that I was able to witness the success, but it doesn't take the burn out of losing this year. It doesn't take the burn out of getting close and not making it. So when you say, what do I focus on when I to, to continue myself to, to be great or maybe just be a fan of greatness? The thing that I think about is the fact that it's possible. It can still so happen like. Yeah. So, so, so now give me a personal example. Chris opened up with a person once. She went right for the jugular. She was like, when she was on tour traveling, she's around these artists. She at the Grammy. She's doing her thing. There were times when she was just like, I don't feel like getting up. I'm tired. I only slept three hours. The motivation ran out, right, Chris? Like you probably running on fumes, but you still got up. You still put yourself together. You still pushed through. You still handled your business. That was a perfect example of. Motivation ran out, but discipline and dedication kicked in. It's almost like you're tag teaming. It's like you tag teaming yeah. average. You are, you are in the wrestling ring and you are fighting average. You are in the wrestling ring and your opponent is average. Your opponent is the 2019 version of you, the 2021 version of you. And you're sitting here saying, okay, you know what? Discipline is like, I need a break. I'm wore out. I'm about to tag. You know what I'm saying? Dedication. I'm about to tag motivation because you not you might not have all of that right so that was a yeah. perfect example and i don't know chris if you want to add some on top of that but i want to go to you know mike after that and really kind of see what tangible personal a time in your life mike when you was just like y'all I I super I geeked it. about something okay come on talk I'm about good. it yeah so when i became a flight attendant right it was a lifestyle that was unparalleled to anything else that anybody was doing around me or that anybody was in support of except for one person, right? And I really had to trust the end result of what it was that I was becoming to really to really give my all into the process because it was it was very disheartening not having support or people trying to talk me out of it. But I knew that it was something that I wanted for my life. I knew that it was something that was going to be life changing for the next level that I was trying to go to. And so what I told myself was that I am not like anybody else. Can there I just is say something no like, I'm sorry, bro. I just felt it in my spirit. I want to just check somebody real quick. There's somebody right. listening to this or watching this right now, and they're thinking like, oh, Mike was a flight attendant? Mike, don't get it twisted. My man had traveled the world. So whoever just thought that, my man had been to probably 10 times more countries than you've ever gone through. I seen my man in Bali. I done seen my man jumping off cliffs. I done seen my man swimming with sharks. I done seen my man in Paris, France. Ooh la wee wee, sipping fancy tea. 
That was a bar. You feel <laughs> me? Like, I done seen him live life on that next. We talk about next level living. My man literally has yeah. traveled the world. And if you want to snap, Mike, if you want to stunt and let them know some of the different countries you've gone to briefly, cool. If not, you ain't got to. But I just felt it in my spirit. Somebody heard that and was just like, bro, why did I don't get Yeah, you don't get it. And he's traveled yeah. the world. You know what I'm saying? He chose yeah. to go that route. And now he's making a pivot coming to the A. But yeah, go ahead, Mike. I just had to add that little piece, bro. And and see, I, I appreciate you, Jay. And definitely, bro, it's changed my life in a, in a way that I've been able to definitely travel and see so much of the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, Egypt is probably my favorite place I've been to. Mm. Cape Town, uh, South Africa, you know, Bali. Mm. Um, the, mm. pa- like you said, like you said, Paris, you know what I'm saying? Barcelona, mm. just just like mm. a bunch of a bunch of different a bunch of different places that was life changing for me. But the thing about it was, is that everybody won't understand why the why the step that you take in your life is so amazing for you. Right. Beyond any trip that I've ever taken, the thing that be, taking this opportunity did for me is to let me know that anything was possible. Mm. Y'all, I come from a background where people don't leave outside of 30 mile radiuses of where they grew up. They mm. never leave. You Talk come up it. and maybe you try your best to be successful within that air, that space, but they never think that that is possible for themselves. So for me, taking this opportunity was an opportunity for me to see things for myself because learning, I was always told that I wasn't as intelligent or as smart because I didn't learn the same way as everybody else. I don't, I'm not a great test taker. I'm not a great person to just sit there and just remember a lot of lectures mm. and information like that, but I'm hands on. I can learn, I can learn hands on. So I hated geography and history growing up because I never heard history about myself. And I never, I never heard about places that I thought I had access to go. So right. now venturing into this part of my life, traveling all around, I'm so excited about my black history. When I go to Egypt and I see these pyramids and I see black kings and, uh, uh, and, and black people, there were, there were royalty out there. I'm like, oh, I can right. do that. When I travel right. to Bali and I see people, have, uh, people haven't been there and they talk about these places like it's so amazing. And I'm like, oh, I got access to get there at the snap of a finger. It's a blessing. And so when I think mm. about my purpose now, I realize, oh, just because somebody else says that this wasn't possible for them or they don't think it's possible for me i know that if i put enough into myself or enough into my purpose anything is possible that's so what would you say that because some people didn't believe in you and wasn't rocking with you it made you lose that motivation but then you had to absolutely. be dedicated and disciplined okay got you absolutely but i had yeah. remember that one I had that accountability. Mm-hmm. That was my mother. Mm-hmm. The person mm-hmm. who was behind, the person that behind me was my biggest source of inspiration, of motivation to be successful right. for. You know what I'm saying? Like right. sometimes before you even value yourself enough, you got to find that person that you want to go all out for. You know what I'm saying? Right. And right. She, right. she was that for me. And because of that, mm-hmm. that motivated me to go ahead and get it done. I would, For me, uh, anybody want to guess where I'm about to go with this thing? You know, <laughs> it's been a classic, though. Um, I think the thing I'm most passionate about is my family. Mm-hmm. And when me and Tracy Maybe first got married, is. yeah, you already know, bro. Like, I was so disciplined. I mean, so motivated, like, so locked in. Right. But when things don't end up, come on now, this is the Next Level Living podcast, right? Can we keep it 100? Permission to keep it 100? Please. Let me hear from Paul, Chris. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, cute, uh, if I can uh, keep it one hundred, yeah. Come on, listen to me. Permission granted. You talking about you talking about motivation running out? You're talking mm-hmm. about like the zeal and passion being zapped? I realized, mm-hmm. like, you know what? Like, I was like, yo, I ain't signed up for this. God was like, yes, you did. I was like, yo, this mm-hmm. ain't what I thought it was gonna be. This ain't like how I thought it was gonna be. This ain't what it looked like on TV. He like, bro, this is what it is though. The question mm-hmm. is, what you gonna do? Yeah, so you ain't got them little butterflies in your stomach. Yeah, you and Tracy bumping heads. Yeah, the bills is racking up. Y'all done quit your job to do God work and travel and speak and things are stressful. You ain't feeling her. She ain't feeling you. You know what I'm saying? Like the intimacy is shocked. Like y'all in a really weird place. Y'all getting counseling. Motivation being ran out. Dedication was like, tag me in, big dog. Yeah, mm. Dedication was like, tag me in. 
We're going to fight this average. We're going to fight this flesh. We're going to fight this yeah. self. We're going to fight that demonic spirit that's like, what about me? What about me? What about me? That's what Lucifer said. God was like, check that. Tag in dedication. Tag in commitment. Tag in consistency. Tag in that spiritual grit. And so I had to go to another level where I was just like, you know what? And I've shared this before. Like, yo, I'm going to love you the way you need to be loved. And even though I'm not super geek, like, yeah, I get to love Tracy. I wake up extra early. Like, all right, God, give me mm. your spirit. So I can love her the way she deserves to be loved. So I can check my attitude. So I can check my little feelings. And I can talk to them voices inside my head. We got to do a podcast real soon about whose voice are you listening to? You know what I'm saying? So I can tell them voices in my head to shut up, sit down and shut up somewhere and give her the love that she deserves. So God was like, in order for that to happen, you're going to have to go to another level. But right now you on some little boy stuff. So I promise y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, that was probably the one, one of the biggest areas in which I realized dedication is going to run out. But if I'm, I'm a tag team, let me tag in commitment. Let me tag in yeah. consistency, the CCs. Then I brought in them double Ds. Let me tag in dedication. Let me tag in discipline. And we came in and I'm, I'm sitting here juggling both them things. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, what we going to do whatever we got to do, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to make sure that we make the impact that we supposed to make. And I, and that's exactly what we did. And y'all are ignorant. I just have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so let me no, give y'all no, 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 for real because I'm in the ring, like I'm literally in the ring fighting average, and I'm seeing the doubles, like the CC. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm seeing um consistency. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing consistency. I'm seeing commitment. Like I gotta show up to 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 fight them things. You know what I'm saying? And then I then I'm and I'm cause, cause average is attacking. Hey, yo. Average, listen to me, bro. Like average is literally like like and, I, and you know why we call the podcast the next level living podcast? It's because we are all striving to live life on the next level. Meaning, next level living is the constant pursuit to be everything that God has called us to be. We're all looking for that next level, right? And so if we're looking for the next level, that means we don't want to stay average. We don't want to stay stagnant. That's why I gave the analogy like, yo, we in a ring, like a wrestling ring, and you got to tag in. When motivation runs out, I tag in the double Ds dedication and discipline. And I'm sitting here working with both of them to fight that average. You know what I'm saying? So I can be what I'm supposed to be. And I'm telling y'all right now to wrap this thing up, right? It's not going to be easy. In order for you to go to the next level, you got to be locked in. You got to be sharp. You got to be disciplined. You got to be focused. Even right now, Mike got a little discipline. He got a little off his focus, but I brought him right back in. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes that's how it be. So when Christopher first hit us with them, Focus. What happens when motiv- when motivation runs out? I'm thinking like, man, story of my life. People bring me and I get to travel all over the country, all over the world to speak, to motivate them and inspire them. But I'm a holistic speaker. Anybody that's listening, anybody that's watching, that's ever been in the audience when I speak, you know I'm not up there with that fluff talk. You can do it. You know I'm not up there with that. How bad do you want it? I ain't up there with I'm giving you tangible things you got to do. And I'm bearing my heart and I'm bearing my soul. And I'm letting you know what I went through so that you realize it's possible. But most people don't realize this. All the adversity, all the pain, all the trials, all the different things that you're going through is you're going to make you stronger to go out here and make an impact across the world. You feel me? And so that's why yeah. we go through the things that we go through. And so sometimes that motivation runs out. You lose that zeal, but it's just like, yo, what did I commit to? Fact. So Chris was just like, yo, I committed to being on tour. I committed to managing these artists. I can, I'm focused on the end results. So I'm dedicated. I'm disciplined. Y'all give me any closing thoughts, anything that you need to do differently, you know what I'm saying, or any tips that you would give our audience or our listeners you know, when they get to a point when it's like, yo, I'm not motivated no more. I ain't even trying to go to school. I ain't trying to go to work. I'm not even trying to like do what I should be doing like with my family or maybe they lost the motivation when it came to working out. Like any tips, Chris, Mike, talk to me. Can't one of, hear you. One of, okay, okay. Can you hear you me now? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I would say one of the things that I've started to just really do is find a, a routine. I used to be afraid of routines really because I was like no because that's monotonous I don't want to feel like I'm doing the same thing every day that'll get boring I'll get burnt out but you can change your routine you can switch it up at at any time but I think that waking up every day saying okay look I'm gonna you know pray I'm gonna meditate I'm gonna I'm gonna eat I'm gonna Um, you know, sit down in front of my computer. I don't necessarily know what I'm going to work on right now, but as soon as I open up my computer, I'm going to start working on something. Then mm. that me in that space. And I'm like, you know, I can't get up from this spot until, you know, this time. And so since if I'm disciplined and I have that routine, I can say, 
anything goes between these hours, but I know something's going to get done. And so I think that has been helpful too, because sometimes I can't even, like the day before I usually try to plan out the next day or, you know, several days in advance, but sometimes it just doesn't happen like that. And so right, if I right. have a daily routine where I say, even if I didn't plan it out the day before, today I'm going to do something because I'm disciplined enough to sit in this chair until I succeed at something today. Then I love it. I love that's it. been very helpful for me too. Um, mm. and, and nine times out of 10, I walk away with something that I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I motivated myself just by sitting in a chair, just by being disciplined. Handle, yeah, I like that. Having a routine, having a schedule, as opposed to just free flowing. As opposed yeah. to just, I'm excited. I'm a, No, no, no. Having a routine, mm -hmm. have a schedule, you know what I'm saying, to kind of map out your day. Yeah. And you can that, track, that you being you know, the things yeah. that are getting done. Yeah. Mm. I love, mm. I love seeing a list and I'm checking things off of it. I love, right. I love that because it right. means, okay, I'm not just wasting my time. I'm not just saying mm. I want to be successful, but I'm not doing anything to get there. When I see a checklist and I see things are marked off, I see you are going in the right direction. That's what I see. Oh, I love it. I love it. Mike, what advice would you give the people, bro? I can't hear you, bro. I said I want to bounce off of Crystal. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I want to bounce off Crystal. I really love the points that you said about having a schedule and everything like that. The thing that's changed for me this year, number one, more than anything else, is preparation. This is hmm. the most uncomfortable thing that I've ever done because a lot of times I'm having to prepare when I'm most exhausted. When I'm preparing for the next day, I, it is the end of my last day and I'm ready to reward myself with the sleep that I feel like I deserve based off of the consistency I did on that day. But mm -hmm. my job's not done. I realize I have to prepare what, how I'm going to be successful again for the next day. My day's not over once my day's complete um, with the task that I've set out. I also have to make the new task. My, basically, my tomorrow starts today. Does that make sense? Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. starts in the preparation that I've set for tomorrow. And then, yes, those those to-do lists and those check boxes. Now I know what I'm working with. I know what my day is about to look like before my day arrives. And so even before I check off a box, I need to list what the box is. What is it that I'm doing tomorrow? What is my day mm -hmm. going to look like? That way, if I get a call and somebody's like, hey, I'm in town. Um, I haven't seen you in a couple of years. Hey, I want to do this. Hey, man, it'd be great to see you. Hit me up around this time. And if I'm done with what I have committed to first, right. I would love to take advantage of that opportunity. But I cannot be loyal to anybody else in my life until I've been loyal to myself. And preparation is the best way that I've learned to do it. So you're really talking about holding yourself are you talking about holding yourself accountable? That's crazy. Uh, to the highest That's degree, crazy. bro. Yeah, you're talking about holding yourself accountable because I remember um, my mentor one time was saying that everybody else, you go to businesses, you get like a satisfaction, money back guarantee, 30-day trial, I'm going to return it. Like you can hold other people accountable, but we don't ever really hold ourselves accountable. So what you're that really part. saying is that if I'm supposed to get this done on Wednesday, even if I got the homies coming to town Thursday, I'm telling myself, like, yo, if I don't get this done, I can't link up with y'all, bro. That is strong, even got, man. Even if I got the homies coming in on Tuesday. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I got to forfeit that immediate thing. And they got to understand that I love them. They got to under, understand that I love them enough to where if I tell them no, it's only because I've prioritized something so big within myself. They ain't got no choice but to accept it. Or to rock oh, with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. When somebody absolutely. I love cuts me off for something that they doing, I'm proud of them. I'm like, oh, do your thing because I know how much you love me. I know how much you rock with me. So That's why we're a little different. That's why we different because okay. I'd be pissed. Like, bro, why you ain't handled your business? Now we can't kick it. <laughs> you feel me? But but I got you got you. When y'all talk <laughs> about this, I think about how it starts in a child. You know, parents are like, did you clean your room? Okay, you can't go out. Like, did you? Mm. And it's, it's, it's almost like conditioning from when you're a child to when you're an adult to doing this for yourself. Um, when, I was, when I was younger, I didn't appreciate that. I didn't appreciate my mom telling me I couldn't go if I didn't do, you know, X, Y, and Z. But you now as an adult, it's like, thank you. Thank you for doing but, that. Yes. Now as an adult, you're saying thank you. 
But if we really think about the psychology of it, most people, when you a teenager, you're ready to become adult. Tell me why. Tell me why did y'all want to become an adult? Because you ain't want people telling you what to do. I know from freedom. 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 I didn't want people holding me accountable. I ain't want people telling me what to do. No. You ain't gonna tell me when to go to sleep. You ain't gonna tell me when I can come and go. You ain't gonna tell me nothing about eating my vegetables. I want to do things the way I want to do things. That's right. deep. I never thought about that, Chris. Gee, so we yeah. were raised the way. It's like yo, if you handle your business, you become rewarded. If not, there are consequences. And so we're running. It's like we're running to be average. We run to be adults so that people mm. don't have to hold them accountable. Mm, let, me, let, me t- let, me, let me give a PSA real quick to all the young people that's listening to this. Being an adult is ghetto. Let me, let me tell y'all what this means, y'all. This, this is a, this, let, let me, let me tell Bro, you where something. Where are you going to go with that? Because, because young people, and we've all been there, we've all looked forward to this thing called freedom, right? Until you become adult. And when I look, when I look at a child, especially when I'm mentoring these kids, man, I always tell them, I was like, I was like, I was like are you excited to be an adult? And they're like, heck yeah, I'm grown. I was like, yeah, you're not an adult yet. You're not grown yet. When you are an adult, you're not excited about it no more because you realize before there's freedom, there's responsibility. So yes, Mm -hmm. I don't have to do what my mom tells me to do. But as an adult, you are held to a different standard than as a child. If I don't do what I'm supposed to do now, guess what? I'm homeless. If I don't do what I'm supposed to do now, guess Mm. what? I'm I'm incarcerated. My freedom Mm. is taken from me a lot longer than I have control. You are never in full control of everything. You just get the first choice as an adult. You get to decide what you want to do first. Life will tell you afterwards the consequence of that decision. It's ghetto. The only, I never looked at it like that. The only thing you in control of is your actions. The only yes, thing you in control of are the decisions that you make. The only thing that you can control of is your perspective. The only thing that you're in control of is the work that you put in every single day. The only thing that you're in control of is saying, you know what? I'm not really motivated right now, but I control my mindset. I'm going to be disciplined. Yep. I'm going to be right. dedicated. Yep. I'm going to be consistent. Yep. I'm going to operate with character. Yep. I'm going to execute and do what I got to do so I can go to that next level. Because I'm not thinking about where I am right now. I'm thinking about where I want to be. You know what I'm saying? I'm not thinking about what makes me feel good. I'm thinking about the life that I want to live, the things that I want to accomplish and attain. And everybody in the world, I feel like, starts off on something and they're super motivated, but it's only a matter of time before you run out of gas and you're not as motivated and you're not as pumped up, especially when the stuff hits the fan. And then you got to ask yourself, how bad do you really want it? How bad do you really want to be successful? How bad do you really want to go to the next level? And to all of our next level is out there, when you have this mindset that says, I'm not motivated and I'm not excited about it, but I'm committed to the end results. I'm dedicated to my purpose. I'm dedicated to the mission. When you have that mindset, that truly is next level living. I'm on another level. What's up, y'all? I hope y'all enjoyed the episode. Now it's time to get the merch. Go to shopnextlevel.co in the promo code, put podcast, and get you 20% off. All right, see you next week. I'm on another level. I'm on another level. I'm on another level.